Does Boathouse have the best brunch in Disney Springs? Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Jay. And you are watching the Theme Park Foodies and we're back at Disney Springs. I feel like we're like the Disney Springs vloggers at this point. We've had so many videos the past few weeks on Disney Springs, but we really do enjoy it here. The atmosphere is on point. Uh, it's so dynamic with all like the moving Ampa cars and like the balloons up in the, so in the sky. There's uh, like music like roaming around. Yeah, it really is just such a fun aesthetic to experience. And today we're gonna be dining at the restaurant where the Ampa cars come out from Boathouse. Boathouse has an iconic brunch here. We've recently had a video on the brunch at City Works and we've had brunch at Wine Bar George. Now we've said previously that Wine Bar George we think has the best food in Disney Springs, but honestly I think for atmosphere and food, my favorite's Boathouse, right? Well, USA Today voted Boathouse the number one Disney Springs restaurant. Wow, yeah. I and we, with USA we have done the brunch before, we just haven't filmed it. Yeah. And it's Easter Sunday, so we figure like this was the perfect time to have a nice brunch. They do, it does run um, on Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to 2. And you can also, I think, get like the lunch menu stuff at this time. Right oh, nice. now it's about, where well, I think our reservation is 11.45. Yeah, so it's a we were in a little bit later. A true brunch time, I feel like eleven forty-five. They also often sometimes have a piano player. Yeah, right? no, they always have that, and then oh. the captain plays the piano and then so cool. takes requests. So. Yeah, and for those that don't know, Boathouse is located in the landing section of Disney Springs. We'll show you guys how to get there, but it kind of looks like a port that's kind of sitting right off the bay of the Sasagul River here at Disney Springs. It is a, like a very beautiful aquatic boat themed aesthetic it's very nice inside the seafood is some of the best in disney springs i'm, I'm hyping of, it up some of the seats are in boats aren't yes. they yeah, yeah on it's the really, outside it's really cute wonder where we'll end up are you ready i'm ready All right, if you enjoy the content please like and subscribe join us for our brunch over here at the boathouse at disney springs that spot right over there is the landing you'll always have to head over some form of bridge to get there but the two parking garages that are closest would be the lime or the Orange Garage. We'll show you how to get there from Orange. So the main exit for the Orange Garage takes you right outside Planet Hollywood. If you head straight down and then kind of bear right slightly, you'll go over this bridge, which will bring you to the landing. As we go over this bridge, we're going to see Maria and Enzo's as well as the Edison on our left, but we have to head past them way down a bit. Another restaurant we're gonna see on our left as we head down is Paradiso 37. We've never actually eaten here. If you'd wanna see a video on here or, or not, just let us know in the comments. As we head down on our right-hand side, we're gonna see the Cookie King of Disney Springs, Gideon's, and right next to Gideon's, Sam's favorite restaurant. Uh, mine sometimes too, it depends on how I'm feeling. Wine Bar George, and then right past that, that little top of that building, that's Boathouse. We can already hear the piano player on the outside here, uh, but if you're staring straight on from Boathouse to the left is gonna be where the Ampicar launches, and to the right will be the boutique. It's like their own little gift shop. Oh, they have this saucy antique here. It's like a boat that looks like a little flying saucer, a water saucer. I love the entrance here. It's kind of like open air. It feels like vacation. Their fresh oysters, clams, and shrimp are really good too. We're going in the regatta dining. We've been here before. It's very aristocratic in here. All right. So we're seated. They have like three different menus from us. We'll try to break it down. I did want to bring up that oftentimes these little lights are fake, but here it's an actual gas light, so don't burn yourself. So we have this first smaller menu, which has this pan-roasted Alaskan halibut as a catch of the day. They also have a jumbo Florida stone crab calls. Oysters in the half shell. Half shell. Oysters are great here. And all these different things that you can get. And on the back of this, we have all the drinks. These are a bit pricey. They have the whiskey, bourbon, scotch, and Louis the 13th. That's got to be expensive because it's a French king's name. All right, so this is the brunch menu. Now, obviously, some seafood flair with the shrimp and grits, but they also have steak and eggs. Oh, a Biscoff cookie waffle. That sounds amazing. Avocado toast, chorizo breakfast tacos, and crab cake benedict. I got this last time. It was really good. They also do have some special drinks that you can get for brunch. Sides look standard until I saw cheddar beer grits. Five bucks. I feel like it's got to be worth it. And then for kids, they have a half Belgian and scrambled eggs. And then this is their standard lunch menu, which I'm not going to break down because I want to just do a separate video on it they can get here during the day. But I will say the food here is very good. We got to come back. Also have a much larger 
drink menu on the back of this. They do have some nice mocktail creations on the back of this menu, so I may get one of these, and if you're a Red Bull or Energy Drink fan, they do have some great concoctions. All right, so we can't hear the piano player from in here, but did it start us off with this very delicious bread? It's probably for the best we can hear him because it'd be very loud. Now, is this like a drizzle, like a sweet drizzle? It's a cinnamon icing. Ooh. I feel like you don't even need butter for this. Look at how it's so warm and fresh. Look at that. Uh, pulls. These are the yeast rolls that they also have with dinner, but for brunch they jazz them up with the cinnamon. When the bread is prettier than you are, you know it's good. Delicious. Now, I do need to try some of the butter. Definitely whipped. I don't feel like it needs the butter though, that's the thing. They do make your hands quite messy. So you have probably, probably a fork and knife for many people. They have one of the best bread services. Outstanding. We counted once, and I think bread service was the thing we gave the most tens to. So we're very impressed by bread service. This is an excellent bread service. I'm going to give it a 10. I can, for a brunch type of bread service, I can't imagine it being much better. The, war, the, the rolls are warm, fresh. You don't even need butter. The butter, if you use a light amount of it, does elevate it slightly. And there's good sweetness to it, but it's still so not too sweet because it drizzle on top. It doesn't go in the interior. It's very good. Just, yeah. I can't imagine, I keep, I, say, I keep saying this, but I can't imagine as far as this type of bread service doing it much better. All right, so our mocktails have arrived. We're gonna start off with Sam's. What's yours, Sam's? I got the tart cherry limeade, which has tart cherry syrup, fresh key lime juice, and lemon lime soda. I just called you Sam's. That's good. Super, super tart. A little bit of sweetness. Very refreshing. This is something that I wish would be like on every mocktail menu, like I would get banning it. Really good. I'll give this a nine. Uh, yeah, that sounds really good. Mine looks really impressive as well. All right, so this long boy is the blueberry lavender. Sam, what's in this? This has a lavender syrup, fresh blueberries, fresh key lime juice, and Sprite. The key lime juice mixed with blueberries is what kind of sold this to me. It sounded like such an interesting flavor combination, and it is. Uh, the blueberries had like a good tart sweetness um, that, that contrasts well with almost like the citrus flavors of the lime. And then obviously, we got the bubbles, which had a different texture to it. Uh, I think you and I have been asking for better mocktails throughout Disney property, and this menu definitely has great mocktails. I know some people aren't very happy that we enjoy mocktails, but we do. Um, I think soda is one of the most popular soft drinks in America and often outsells beer. So, I mean, I do enjoy these. And I'm gonna give this an eight. What do you think? I haven't tried it. This is really good. The mocktails are some of the best in Disney. All right, so this is the Lucky Ducks, Duxbury Bay, Massachusetts Oyster. It's grown and harvested exclusively for the boathouse. And I, I love the oysters here. You know, you gotta put a little bit of lemon juice on that. And then I always love to have a little bit of, they get a little horseradish in their cocktail sauce. I don't put too much in there. And it gave me so much dip for just for one oyster, right? All right? Let's try it out. You know, if you had oysters before, you know they can be chewy sometimes. It's just that's like butter. It's like eating butter with, it's that slight, slight horseradish, a little bit of sourness from the lemon. That is delicious. That's a 10 of an oyster for me. Uh, the raw bar here is one of my favorite, and I love the shrimp too. If I was, if I had a lot of money, I'd be getting more raw food, but I think that's all I can I can get for today. All right, so our brunch has been served. I got the crab cakes Benedict. They're twin crab cakes, prosciutto ham, poached eggs, Old Bay hollandaise, and grilled asparagus. So you can see they actually use the crab cake instead of like a biscuit or an English muffin. And then there's Old Bay seasoning in the hollandaise sauce, and you get these thick pieces of asparagus. They also give you a little lemon. I think I'm gonna do lemon on one and lemon not on the other. But you gotta try, you know, because it's fish, a little lemon zest. All right, let's see how the poached egg breaks. Oh, look at that goo. That's beautiful. All right, so let's get all the flavors in one. The crab is just so good here. Man. That's amazing. And then the slight Old Bay seasoning, the hollandaise sauce. It's like, it's it's perfect. Let me try a little bit of the asparagus. It's good. It's asparagus, it's well made. Man, that crab cake Benedict. With the prosciutto too, that sharp flavor. Look, I'm gonna go 10. That's, 
That's excellent. All right, so I did get a side of cheddar beer grits. Um, it's basically the shrimp and grits, just without the shrimp. It's only five bucks, and look at the size of this thing, Sam. It's big. Uh, so it's obviously grits with cheddar and beer. So let's see how it tastes. Oh, there's a little spice in there. I do love me a good cheddar grit. Ooh, it's spicier than I anticipated. I don't know what that spice is. But we had videos on Dollywood that we did years ago for their fall festival. And I'm still living for those grits we had. Southern, those Southern Tennessee grits we have in Dollywood. I compare everything to that now. And this is delicious, but it's just not there. Good sharp cheddar flavor though. Definitely great texture. I, just, I don't think I like the spiciness as much. I don't think, that, usually cheese would cool down that spice, but. Spice, spice forward. I'm gonna go seven with this. Very well made, just not my favorite. All right, so you can get the actual lunch and dinner menu while having brunch here. So Sam, she opted for a little appetizer that they have. They're the filet mignon sliders. They're exactly as they sound. They come on brioche buns, they're little filet mignons, and this is a partner restaurant with the Gibson Steakhouse, so they have great steak here. Yeah, so they actually raise their own cattle, so they have very good beef, and I have never come here and not order these. So even though we were doing the brunch video, I'm like, I still gotta get them. Yeah, they're excellent. Yeah, we have one more thing coming, and we, they used to be on the dinner menu, and they used to come with a side of their delicious shoestring fries, but they are on the appetizer menu now, so no fries. I don't know when it came before. I thought it was chew in the fries. I don't know. I don't know, but anyway, they're nice and toasted, and they're like doused in butter, and I'll save you one, because I know you're... I do want one, thank you. Mm. It's perfectly medium rare. Nine. I'm surprised you wouldn't go to town with those because you get them every single time. Like that's like a must get for you. I mean with the fries, excellent. Just wish we still had the fries. All right, so you always need to have breakfast, dessert, or second breakfast, as some call it. And we got the cook Biscoff cookie waffle to split. This is cookie butter syrup, crushed cookies, mixed berry compote, and whipped cream. So you can see some syrup and crushed cookies right on top of this. And you can see the mixed berry compote right there, and there's more of that cookie butter syrup. Oh yeah, I think dip sounds like a good idea. I'll get a little compote on that in the future too. It smells amazing. These are Belgian style waffles. The syrup is nice and hot. It's so good. I thought that there would be like pieces inside the waffle though. I feel like the waffle is plain and then it's just the crushed pieces and the syrup that make it cookie butter. I could be wrong, but I, I think the waffle itself is plain, but it's a, it's a good Belgian waffle. It's nice and crispy on the outside. It's nice and fluffy on the inside. And who doesn't love cookie butter? I'm gonna try some with the berry. You get that compote. The berry compote has a little tartness to it. Very, very good. I'll give these an eight. Yeah, it sounded like the perfect breakfast dessert. All right, so for me, I wanna try, since you get these little syrup traps in here, I wanna produce what I want first, and I'm gonna cut off that production piece. If that makes sense. Ooh, that is- I don't know what you just said. That is delicious, thick whipped cream. Put a little compote in there. And then, obviously, drizzle that. Oh, look at that. Look at those little traps. Those syrup traps. Oh, man, that looks delicioso. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's try it out. It's surprisingly not overly sweet. Yeah, you're right. You could almost do it without the berry compote, I think. Yeah, I didn't think it needed it. I do think it tastes good and it's nice, but I don't, I don't think it was necessary. I want more cookie butter. Yeah, I actually think the cookie butter liege at Universal is a better cookie butter waffle. Uh, I wouldn't need any more cookie butter. It's good. The, the, if I'm going Belgian waffle in and of itself, it's a near perfect Belgian waffle. The issue is it's a cookie butter Belgian waffle, which is what brings it down for me. Because it is executed so well in the roast like Belgian wa waffle fashion, I'm going to go seven. But if you gave me more 
syrup and more cookie butter like pieces or like Biscoff cookies inside all squares in here. Like, yeah, they were baked into the waffle mix, I think it was. You can see it's like it's very bare. And I, I would just want more of that because that texture, that crunchiness, is what's gonna elevate this. It's good though, it's a great Belgian waffle. I could definitely go for the Belgian waffle. Belgian. I have no regrets. Yeah, I just went Belgian waffle, I'd probably be eight or nine, but because this is a cookie butter Belgian waffle, I'm gonna go six and I'd recommend just six. Six? Oh, seven. Was... Sorry, I meant to say seven. We're on our way out, but I did want to show you guys they do have an outdoor bar that you can actually sit at and get the full menu at. You can also do the same thing at the indoor bar that you saw right when we walked in. And they have these very cool boats outside. This is kind of like the overflow seating for when they're really packed, but it's nice because you feel that nice kind of... Rocking. Exactly, from being on the dock. They have a bunch of antique boats and jet skis out here too. We're on our way out, but I did want to catch the piano players before we left. They do have a tip jar to the left if you want to tip them on the way. Unfortunately, we don't have cash on us. But they're kind of in the right, right in the main dining hall. All right, like any good attraction, you have to exit through the gift shop. I think we actually found a great souvenir for Frank. White paw for the drunken dog. All right, so that does it for our boathouse brunch. Sam, is it the best brunch in Disney Springs? For me, so far, yes. Yeah, I love Wine Bar George, but definitely beats out Wine Bar George. Definitely beats out Summer House. Uh, it also uh, beats out City Works. I think City Works so far has been the weakest to us. I think some people would like City Works. They have a lot of drinks. Um, they have some interesting fried concoctions and a fun menu, but for so far, they've been the weakest to me. And I think Boathouse has definitely been the best. They have a better variety than Wine Bar George, in yeah. my opinion, for the brunch options. Yes. But I like Wine Bar George's dinner. I think the Wine Bar George's, George's dinner food is the best dinner food in Disney Springs, in my opinion. Well, for aesthetics, for food, for the atmosphere, uh, boat, the boathouse feels like an attraction. It feels like you're experiencing something. And the servers, we have never had a bad one there. Uh, the food is just delicious. The seafood is fresh. Some of the, probably the best seafood I've had in all of Walt Disney World. And the steak is really good too because they've raised yeah. their own cattle, the Gibson Yes, group. it's like Angus beef that's made specifically for and the Gibson Those company. sliders are just like, they are just covered in butter and on like a perfect toasty roll. <laughs> Honestly, the sliders and then the little cookie butter waffle, like that was like the perfect brunch for me. Like it, <laughs> was, delicious. it was great. Yeah, for me, it was those crab cakes and the crab cakes had so much crab in them. Like a lot of times you get crab cake, it's a lot of like the stuffing that they kind of put in there. It was just pure, delicious, fresh crab without that fishy taste, with the perfect type of base seasoning on top. Really good. The bread service, the mocktails, everything was, was really on point. Yeah. So. 10 out of 10 experience. And, and if you dine there, they do give you $25 off of doing the little Amphicar oh, ride. Oh, so. interesting. That's good to know. <laughs> And if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow with pushing this video out into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. Helps other people find the video subscribing. It also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notifications. That way you're notified every time when videos come out, which is when, Sam? Every Monday and Thursday as well. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. There is a brunch left standing, though, that we've yet to try. This building right here is home to homecoming, a very popular brunch that many consider the best in Disney Springs. We will have to try it out to see if it is able to trump the boathouse as our favorite brunch here in Disney Springs. Definitely a beautiful restaurant, definitely great food. We have had lunch there previously. It's very filling though, that, yes. food, that southern food. <laughs> yeah, very carby. And the fine fellows that you see scrolling up in, on the screen in front of you, those are our members. You too can become a member for, the, for as low as a dollar. 99 a month but we appreciate any like comment or subscription thanks for supporting us thanks for watching